Oh my gosh, this list took forever to make. Going off the title, I'm I'm sure you know why you're here. I've been seeing a trend going across booktube, across so many different kinds of booktubers, making a list, compiling a list of the 10 most difficult books to them, subjectively, I'm assuming, because I've watched so many different videos uh, like this, and you know, it's not saying that these books are difficult across the board, they're just gonna be difficult for the reader. That's what I'm doing. I'm making a, a list, the 10 most difficult books that I want to read, but you don't have to, but I'm gonna read them, because I'm insane. Yep, that is today. These are the books that kind of scare me. These aren't the books that I'm like, ooh, yes, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a hundred hours of reading challenge. And this is more of, that scares the crap out of me and I don't know if I'll be able to read that book. I, I hope this is making sense, you know what I mean? I hope this is making sense. I guess we ought to just get started. Number, number 10, to some this may not be difficult, but to me this has been a book that actually has kind of kicked my butt. I've used it more as a reference to something than actually saying, oh, I've read this book all the way through, I love this book. That is J.R.R. Tolkien's The Silmarillion. Believe it or not, as, as much as I love Middle Earth and Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, The Silmarillion is a book that has just, oh my gosh, I've gotten so close and yet I'm always so far. When I say that I've used this as a reference, I mean specific events that are alluded to in, in The Lord of the Rings and even in The Hobbit, you can find a reference to it in here. And so I've used it as kind of more of a cross-reference study guide than I have actually sitting down and reading this cover to cover. Boy, is this difficult. And so this is number 10 because it's a book that I've struggled with for so long. Yeah. All right, number nine. I don't actually own a physical copy of this. That'd be Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens is an author that I haven't tried, I haven't tried my hand at too much, but the books that I have tried, oh my gosh. I remember in seventh grade, I read, uh, you know, Christmas Carol, which was really good. I've also tried A Tale of Two Cities, and that, oh my gosh, that book is another one of those that I, I've soft DNF'd it every single time I try to read it because I know it's such a great story. And it's a classic for a reason, but Dickens, the way that man writes just kicks my butt. And so Great Expectations is a book that I have heard so much about. My wife, my dear sweet Ashlyn, she loves that book. She says it's a great book. And I, as avid as a reader as I am, and I like to challenge myself, I have yet to even come close to trying Great Expectations. And, and the reason I, I deem it difficult is because Charles Dickens is difficult. He's not my sort of prose, he's not my sort of storyteller but he's one of the greatest of all time at the trade. And so I wanna give him a shot. <sighs> Number eight. Number eight, so many books could fight for this spot, but the book that earned number eight spot, Anne Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Anne Rand is an author I'm familiar with as a freshman in high school. Uh, my, my English teacher, for some sadistic reason, had us read Anthem by her, which was the most complicated book that I've ever read. It's still one of the most complicated books I've ever read. And her magnum opus is Atlas Shrugged, this nearly 1200 page doorstopper of a novel, but everyone rants and raves about her books, whether it's Anthem or The Fountainhead or Atlas Shrugged. She's just one of those authors that just captured a moment and captured everyone's attention. And she also wrote about something that's so relevant across time and space. But this is a book that I've been so interested in. I remember trying to read it as a junior in high school, just for fun. I went to the, uh, <laughs> I went to the school library and was like, yeah, I'm gonna try this book. And I got 20 pages in and realized I was in over my head. I was sinking and I was sinking fast. It was, I, I was not, I was not a seasoned enough reader to read that kind of book, so. <laughs> Next. Some of you in the comment section will probably say, regardless, that this number seven spot isn't technically a book. And you'd be right. It is technically 10 books. That's right. That's right. Malazan Book of the Fall. All 10 books. I've, I've chosen to put all 10 of them in number seven because to me, it's still the same story all throughout. And you can say that with any trilogy or any series. I know I'm kind of bending the rules, but for those of you who've been on the channel for a long time, you know that the Malazan books kick my trash. I finally finished the second book at the beginning of this year, and I want to move on to the third. Guys, there's ten books. And and the four that I'm, these are the last four that I'm holding in my hand, and guess what? I'm probably holding 6,000 pages. All of these, they're pretty much all 1,300 pages. They, like, that's insane. It's some of the most complicated world building, complicated 
magic complicated everything I've ever read in any book series ever. Just done more epic and, and more out of proportion than ever and than any other book series and any other author and any other fantasy setting. And yet there's as much as I have hated my time with these books, there's something about them that keeps drawing me back. And I just I just want to read all 10 books. That is a goal that I have for my life. Uh, sometimes I feel a little hopeless <laughs> when I read these books because I know um, I'm not I'm not adequate. I'm not adequate to the task of reading them. But I want to. Like the like the title says, I'm insane. <laughs> I like to punish myself as a reader, and uh, this is this is the most torturous thing I can think of. <sighs> All right, number six. Number six is Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Cormac is one of the most beloved American authors, not only of the last few decades, but probably probably of all time. He's written some of the most iconic books. The one that stands atop the heap is Blood Meridian. The thing that makes this difficult for me is that Cormac McCarthy, man, he, the, the, the one book that I have read of him and the other books that I've perused at the bookstores, he breaks all the rules. He throws not only caution to the wind, but he throws grammar and punctuation as well. There's no, there's no quotation marks differentiating who's speaking to, to one another. He, he, he doesn't like to use commas and semicolons and dashes and he don't like to do any of that. I, he just likes to write a story as if you're there in the moment soaking it up in real life and it's really hard to read. But Blood Meridian not only has that, but it is an insanely um, just dark and heavy and brutal novel. <sighs> And I want to give Cormac another shot, and I think Blood Meridian is the one I have to go with because the road was good. I was disappointed, but it was good. I think Blood Meridian will probably be the, the book that changes my mind on Mr. McCarthy, and I'll probably learn to love the rest of his books. Oh, I'm just I. Oh man, like just thinking about that book kind of makes me start to sweat. All right, we're in the top five. The top five was really hard to come up with, but the book that stands in the number five place is The Count of Monte Cristo by. Alexander Dumas. Just a, a beautiful, a beautiful piece of fiction. Thing is, this is one of those books that I've tr I've attempted to read on more than one occasion. And I always get to the same part in the book. Once I get there, I go, man, I, I'm enjoying this, but I really kind of want to just mood read. I want to put this down. I want to go to a safe space and I want to read something that I'm comfortable with. This is, it, it's one of those books that I've softy enough at least two or three times. And it's not because it's bad. I will never ever say that this book is bad. And so I want to read Alexander Dumas' Greatest Achievement. And again, She's not light. This is not light reading. This is almost 1,100 pages. At least this copy is. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, does it scare me. <laughs> it scares me. Because it's also one of those books that, oh, you have to read this this publisher and, and this translator because that's a better translation than this one. When you when you go in that rabbit hole of which copy of The Kind of Monte Cristo has better translation, it's like you're just getting into a biblical argument on translations. And, and there's really no winner in, in those debates. Uh, New American Standard Bible, let me tell you, is the, it's the best one. Um, that's another thing that kind of trips me up is, I know translations matter and I wanna be reading the, the one that's the purest translation that's most faithful to the text and I think I found it. So, I'm excited for this, but I'm also really intimidated. Number four. I switched number four and number seven. What? How did I do that? Okay, number seven, technically number four on this list, but it's, it's really number seven, is Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I was so eager to tell you that I'm scared of the Malazan books that I completely forgot to mention Brandon Sanderson. That happens. So uh, just in your mind, swap them. We're really talking about number seven now, but it's number four because I'm a doofus. So Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. This is another uh, placement on the list that is a series instead of one book. The thing is, this is so this is so loved. It's just like Malazan. It has such a, a solid and loyal fan base. Brandon Sanderson is considered right now he dominates the adult well i'm not even going to say adult just he dominates the fantasy scene more than anybody else right now he's he's the top of the list he's the big heavyweight name and the stormlight archives his magnum opus which will eventually be like my last book of the fallen and have ten 
fetching installments. It's scary because all of these books are over a thousand pages and I know that he is a heavy world builder. He's he's huge on the magic systems. I am I am more of a character first, plot second. Now I know, trust me, Sanderson fans, I know he does good character work, but I just I see I hear Brandon Sanderson and I think world building magic, you know, and that's that's not the kind of fantasy that I'm into. But I want to read these books because Brandon Sanderson, you know, I'm a fantasy fan and Who's the big name? All right, top three. And the top three, once you see them, they'll make sense. <laughs> once you see them, they will make plenty of sense. Number three is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. War and Peace is one of those classics that is just humongous in more ways than one. Sure, it's big in page count. Sure, it's big in word count, but it's also big in every other sense of the word. The story is grand, the characters are huge. Just everything about it just is so cherished. And there's something about the Russian authors that just, uh, I don't know, they call to me. They interest me so much. All of those prolific Russian authors of the 19th century just kind of have me in awe of them and I haven't even read hardly any of their works. And they just, I don't know, they, they fascinate me like no other group of authors does. And so Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace is one of those that's at the top of the list. I want to read this book. I want to see what's going on. And it, it's also one of those books that it's like, you could have some bragging rights. I'm not here to be prideful. If you have successfully just read War and Peace because you wanted to, that is an accomplishment. I want to be able to say that I've read it and I want to, I want to, for more than just being able to say that, I want to dig into it. I want to dig in and tear it apart and digest it and come out the other side changed. And I feel like that's one of these books that's going to do that. It's going to change me along the way. And I think all of us readers at the end of the day, that's what we're hunting for in these five star reads. I think that's what War and Peace is going to accomplish in my life when I get to it. Number two! Oh boy, number two. This is a book that kind of lives in infamy among those who are aware of it, and that is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. Another brick, another tome, another doorstopper. This thing is huge, and I really couldn't tell you what it's about. Just go look it up, <laughs> just go look it up. Somebody more eloquent than I, and somebody who has more understanding of what that book is about, go check out Leaf by Leaf. That's what I'm talking about. Go check out Leaf by Leaf, see what he has to say about Infinite Jest. Once I watched his video on that book, I was like, I'm gonna read that one day. I'm gonna read that book one day, and it's, it's approaching time. That I'm gonna read that. I'm probably hopefully gonna get to it this year, but that is a very intimidating book, guys, and it's just, I feel like it's one of those that's gonna be really hard to juggle. I may have to take notes or even actually annotate it. I don't annotate fiction, but I may have to annotate it just to keep track of where I'm at, and, and I'm gonna take my time with it to understand it because it is so big and there's so much to it. Oh, so scary. <laughs> it's, also, it's so scary to think about that book, but I have such a desire to read it. You know what I mean? As I grow as a reader and as I stretch myself as a reader, books like Infinite Jest become more appealing to me. Okay, number one. Last but sir, uh, let me start that over. Last but certainly not least is a book that I have tried on three separate occasions to read. Just like the Count of Monte Cristo, I get to the same place every single time. The book that I'm talking about is The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is a thrifted copy that I've had for years. I can still say that I love this book. The parts that I have read. Oh my gosh, just so fascinating. This book is so fascinating from the beginning and yet I've still not finished it. Again, back to the Russian authors and the Russian literature. Dostoevsky is at the top of the list for me. He's the most intriguing of them all. War and Peace is probably the most famous of the Russian novels, but Dostoevsky probably takes the cake as the most prominent among them of all the authors. And you know, he's not he's not just famous for Brothers Karamazov, he's famous for Crime and Punishment, Demons, The Idiot, Letters from the Underground. There's just so many things that he's written that are all so impactful. And The Brothers Karamazov is a book that has been so intriguing to me for years, and I still can't finish the dang thing. It's the most difficult book for me to complete, other than Malazan. I want to just, ah, I want to finish this book. I'm to the point as a reader now, I feel like I've read enough difficult things to where all the, all the books that have been giving me trouble over the years, I'm going to finally conquer and kick down this year. And I'm excited for 
all of them. There's so many other books that I could have included in this list. Uh, I was thinking about Moby Dick by Herman Melville. That's another book that I've tried and failed to read. Don Quixote is a book that I've not tried to read yet, but I want to. Uh, just Cervantes has this kind of, again, he's an alluring author and this book is so old. It's one of the oldest classics out there. Yeah, man, there's so many other books that could have been on this list. Uh, I want to know your thoughts on some of the books that I presented to you on this list. And I also want to know your thoughts on some of the books that you think are difficult that you want to complete, but you're just kind of scared to. Now, I know some of these books on this list may not be difficult to some of you who's watched, who are watching this. And that's fine. That's fine. We're all different readers who have different tastes, who are at different points in their reading journey. This is my list. Thanks for sticking around. Down in the comments, drop your top 10, you know, drop your, drop your difficult books. I want to know the books you're scared of. But folks, I'm going to sign out of here. It's been enough of me jabbing away. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you much, so much for participating. And I will see you in the next one.